<laughs> Our old guy, man, I love Ron. Ron is such a stand-up, solid human being, perfect for what Washington needed during a difficult time of transition. Uh, but, boy, you can't say the quiet stuff out loud. You just can't. And he does. And he does all the time now. Uh, he's... It's what happens, man. My uh, I had a 94 year old grandmother who just started stealing books from the library in the uh, in the, the the home she was in. Yeah, she was like, "What are they gonna do?" Yeah, she was she was cool with it. Like, let him come after me. Much like I think North Carolina should do with Tez Walker. Exactly. Just play him. Why not? What is the NCAA gonna do? Yeah. Uh, look, I don't know how many of these things are gonna come up with Evan Cohen, Chris Canty, and Michelle Smallman, the new ESPN Radio Morning Show, but we have. Evan on the phone with us right now, Evan Cohen, uh, at Evco Radio on Twitter, although you can call it X if you want. Mr. Cohen, congratulations. How you doing? Thank you. I appreciate it. Sorry for the tardiness here, but I need to go to one thing right off the bat. Tell me more about your grandmother stealing books at the library. What a, what a fascinating concept, because here's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I'm thinking your grandmother right. has the right idea, and I'm not advocating anybody in North Carolina stealing. Yeah. What I am saying or wondering, Adam, is are we going to look at people of a certain age, 90 plus, and say, you know what, you're just allowed to, as yeah. long as it's not inhumane to another person, right? I'm not saying that. But you go to a library, and your grandmother just wants to read a book on World War II, and she takes it, <laughs> doesn't check it out, and just walks out. And on her way out, she grabs a cup of coffee from the little coffee place in the library without paying for it, and maybe a little, like, biscuit or cookie or something like that <laughs> are we gonna argue because adam you are onto something yeah. that, that should actually be legal if you're 90 years of age or older well i think there comes a time evan cohen is joining us from espn radio there comes a time where everything you could get away with when you were under the age of eight you can get away with i think when you're over the age of like 85 uh so she was uh, she was 94 when she passed this is a bunch of years ago um and uh, but she, at the, it was like 92, and she wanted, they were, these were not books to read. She just liked the way they looked, and she wanted them in her room. And nobody else was reading them. They were just like classic-looking, hard-backed leather books. She just liked the way they looked. So she took a bunch of them and had them in a room, and they kept trying to take them back from her and bring them to the library, and she wasn't standing for it. She goes, nobody's reading these. You guys don't need them any more than I do. She had her faculties all the way up until it was over. So uh, it was. But, but, but you just, now you brought up something else that's fascinating. <laughs> I know there's other things we've got to talk about. We don't have to talk about so anything many... we don't want to, Evan. <laughs> Okay, because I am thoroughly already enjoying this. So I have a daughter. She's seven, okay? My mm-hmm. son is turning 10. So my daughter, who's seven, all right, based on what you just said, it's okay in theory. We go out to dinner. She drops her fork. She drops her knife. She drops her plate on the floor. It breaks, and she doesn't clean up any of it. That's okay as if you are 90 years old. Mm-hmm. That's also okay. But if you and I go to dinner, which maybe – we will at some point, hopefully, if That'll I come be- down to North Carolina, because be I am all in to make every one of our affiliates, including yours, great here. So if we go to dinner in North Carolina, and the two of us sit there, and we drop our fork, our plate, and our knife, and we don't pick it up, people think we're the biggest two pieces of crap of all time. Yeah. But based on the Adam Gold theory, if you're eight and under and 85 and older, it's okay. 100%. You get away That's with brilliant. everything. You get that away is with everything. Brilliance by you. I got to be honest. That is a brilliant take by you. A, a crime spree when you're in your late 80s, early 90s, you get away with it. They don't even prosecute. You can rob a bank. You're saying if you're 80, just years ask. Old, you don't even have to you rob. Lost. You just ask. I think you get away with it. I think you get and away I with have it. your money, and that's okay. <laughs> Should be. I mean, we, can you put a poll up on your Twitter? And ask and put my, me on there. I'll okay. retweet it. Put it up there. Is it okay to rob a bank if you're over 85 years old? I might. I might not go rob a bank, but I might because I might soften it to a, a much lesser crime. Is but it okay? Can you legally commit crimes if you're over 85? Can you shoplift coffee and a biscuit if you're uh, if you're 85? Right. If you're 80... Is it shoplifting if you're over 85? Right, exactly. That's the way we'll phrase it. And I will. I'll, I'll tag you on it. I'll put that up. Uh, I think you're going to be right. I think <laughs> most people, now people may see this out of context. They may look at it and say, what? But yeah. in the context in which you're presenting it, it makes a lot of sense. 
Yeah, I spe- well, you know what? It was my grandmother, so it absolutely made a ton of sense uh, for me. Uh, bless, uh, bless Rose Roth. Uh, Evan Cohen from ESPN Radio is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. I have spent the last. It seemed it's not just today. I spent the last uh, bunch of time complaining about uh, things like the NCAA and leadership and things like that. Um, how much time do you spend? Because I know you've been doing morning radio at Sirius uh, on Mad Dog Radio for a while. How much time do you yeah. spend contemplating what the heck the NCAA is thinking about when it comes to player eligibility? Like, we have a player here that uh, should be allowed to play, but the NCAA is not doing anything about it. I'm not asking you to get into the nitty-gritty of what's going on with Tez Walker. Uh, but what's going on with college sports and what the NCAA's role is in it? So here's the, here's the question I would ask in return. Why is it that these institutions, and I know money is probably the answer, but why is it that these institutions still abide by NCAA rules? Why do they voluntarily choose to have a governing body that makes absolutely no sense by anyone's uh, acknowledgement of that governing body? Because that's the thing that I don't understand, right? So basically, is it that these, these member institutions actually agree with the NCAA and the way in which they operate, and they do it under the mask or the guise of, well, it's not us, it's the NCAA, even though they actually probably agree with that. Because if you could unify, if you and I as radio hosts could say, all right, you know what, the FCC is a governing body that we don't agree with, let's now abide by another organization. Maybe somebody would do that. We don't have that option. No, That's not a choice. That's, that's legal, right? The NCAA, correct me if I'm wrong, in essence, originally – is a choice by its member institutions to be governed by them. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be. They choose to be. So part of this has to be that we sit back and we say, you know, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Duke, Wake Forest, everybody in that state, and and State, whatever, like they all choose to have this as their governing body. Why? Why? Why do they choose to do that? That's the thing I don't understand. If they're going to block players in, in, from playing based on academics, based on a hardship, based on transfer rules, whatever it is that they're doing, why do we keep using them as the be-all, end-all? I know there must be a reason. I don't know what it is, Adam. I, I, don't, I don't either, especially since the NCAA has not – I don't know what their record is because I don't know how many wins and how many losses. I know they have very, very few wins in court. It might be zero. I mean, maybe it's one, but it's not very much more than one if it's more than one. And I know the losses have mounted, including one to North Carolina, where UNC had this. And I know North Carolina fans are going to be mad at me for even pointing this out. uh, But North Carolina had this decade long run of sham classes. And they basically said to the NCAA, you know what? We think maybe they were easy, but they were real classes. And the NCAA basically just went, yeah, I guess you're right. They just, they have no, they are not willing to stand up anyway. Well, why do you think they did? Explain that to me. Because they don't want to go to court. They look the other way with North Carolina, just because they don't want to. They don't want to go to court. The you can like they convinced was it uh, Mississippi or Auburn convinced the NCAA that Mississippi State was the only school that wanted to pay Cam Newton to go to college. (laughs) They convinced them. They buy and they bought it like, well, I guess so. I guess so. Auburn, nope. Aub- Cam was only going there for the engineering at uh, at Auburn. But it, that's right. the NCAA. I mean, that's some what of they the do. rules. Some of the rules are so crazy. So I'll give you a quick story. So a, a college basketball coach that I was friendly with, or I'm friendly with, said to me. He told me a story one day. He said, um, you know, I had I had lunch with this AAU coach the other day, and we talked about X, Y, and Z. And I said, yeah. And he goes why didn't you stop me? I said, why would I stop you? He goes, I'm not allowed to have lunch with an AAU coach. I said, said, what do you mean? He said, yeah, under NCAA rules, I cannot go out to lunch with somebody like in the AAU world or whatever. And this may have been years ago. Rules may have changed. But like literally could not go out to lunch with an AAU coach. And obviously the goal was head coach of college basketball team, AAU coach, develop relationship. AAU coach feels like the players that that coach can send to that specific college coach can get their lives and careers made better by that person. And he simply took them out to lunch. That's it. And that was technically an NCAA violation. He literally admitted to me an NCAA violation 
just to prove to me the absurdity of the rules and the regulations. Yeah, and now they have a, uh, a brand new president in Charlie Baker, who's the former governor of Massachusetts. Uh, and what I want to hear, and this is about conference realignment, I just want to hear Charlie Baker stand up and say, none of this is good for us. What you guys are doing for football reasons really isn't good for college sports in general. It's great for football, but it's not great for college sports. But we we're, we have heard really nothing from Charlie Baker. Well, he could certainly Adam, say, he could certainly give an opinion, but he has not right. done that. Well, Adam, your point is really a good one because I'm sure you remember this, but for the audience that may not have paid attention like you and I do on a minute-by-minute basis, Rick Patino, now head coach at St. John's, actually tweeted that and said, why not just make the realignment for football and not for the other sports? Now, it doesn't actually work that way because of the TV packages and the money, but in theory, what you just said was not only backed up by you, which is enough for me, but it was backed up by a Hall of Fame coach who said, like, what are we actually talking about? We're not talking about the idea of, of doing this the right way and for the right reasons. It's just for football. I had a conversation. A friend of mine is an AD in the Pac-12. And I had a conversation with him, and I said, hey, why don't you guys take a different spin on this and be opportunistic and inclusive? He said, what do you mean? I said, why don't you just like partner with HBCU schools and give schools opportunities to be in big conferences that aren't previously in big conferences? And he said what you said, which is, well, okay, but that's for football. All the other sports that like don't have the budget for either party, mm-hmm. a Pac-12 school or an HBCU school, like that don't have the budget to do this on the other sports, how do we operate that when you're flying from, you know, California to Virginia for a volleyball game? Unless you're Nebraska, obviously. I know that they have a <laughs> billion people. But but the point what he was making was this is not a college sports conversation. This is just, as Adam just said, a football conversation. It is unfortunately all about football. We have to go. Evan Cohen, uh, at Evco Radio on Twitter. Uh, you've mentioned something about the Pac-12. I don't even know what that is. I don't know that it exists anymore. Well, that's a good point. I'm yeah, going, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Sorry. Going to Wikipedia. Hey, well, you know what? The ACC may get a couple of Pac-12 schools coming up, I think. Uh, yeah, maybe some two from the Pac-12, maybe and maybe more. And who knows? I, You know, I want to talk again, and we'll talk more about n- next time we talk about your grandmother uh, stealing stuff. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll formulate a plan where we can have a, a mini crime spree using uh, – people in their 90s i think that Adam, would be a lot you of fun. are you are on to something brilliant please put that out there on twitter if you haven't already because i'm telling you this was a brilliant brilliant take by you thank you very much sir uh we'll talk again very soon i hope thank you thank Ev- you evan take care evan cohen uh at evco radio on twitter